In this video series, I'll be walking you through how I created this interactive dashboard. All of this was done using Cordo, GitHub Actions, and GitHub Pages. It was completely free to create and to host, and all the interactivity that you see here is powered by observable JavaScript without the need for a shiny server. This dashboard displays the Today's Top Hits playlist from Spotify and is automatically updated every day at 9 a.m. without me needing to do anything at all. I never have to render any of this code locally since GitHub Actions takes care of everything for me. And the code is 100% reproducible because this project uses RENV to manage all the R packages and packaged versions. I created this dashboard as my submission for POSIT's 2024 table contest. And my idea with my submission was to combine as many different tricky components as possible into one Cordo project. Throughout this series, we'll talk about how to create and style Cordo dashboards, how to publish them for free using GitHub Pages, and how to automatically update them on a schedule of your choosing using GitHub Actions, how to include passwords and other confidential information as part of your GitHub Actions workflows, how to use Observable JS to add interactivity to your dashboards, how to use the Hitter2 package to access APIs, and of course, how to use the GT package to create beautiful interactive tables. This playlist contains seven videos, and in this series, we'll build up this dashboard step-by-step step from scratch. I've designed this playlist though, in such a way that each topic has its own video that's fully self-contained. That means that you don't need to watch all seven of the videos in this playlist in order to get value out of the video that you're currently watching. If you do watch all seven though, you'll be able to completely reproduce this dashboard and you'll also have all the tools you need to create a similar project of your own. My name is Melissa Van Bussel and I make videos about our programming and data science. If you find these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel since it really helps me make more videos. Without further ado, let's jump into this video's topic. When you're running things locally, you can use a .renviron file to store things like usernames, passwords, API keys, or other confidential information that you don't want to save directly in your scripts. I'm going to create one as an example. So it's .renviron. And the format that this file takes is you put the name of the environment variable on the left, for example, my username followed by an equal sign, and then the value of that variable. And you can store multiple environment variables in the same file. And then you can run this.getenv, and then the name of the environment variable, for example, my underscore password. But first I need to close and reopen RStudio in order for it to realize that I've created this file. Now that I've relaunched RStudio, if I try rerunning the sys.getenv, it's going to read that .renviron file and then be able to figure out what that confidential information was. This is really useful because it gives you a way to make reference to confidential information like passwords or API keys without actually having to save that information in your scripts themselves. For example, in our dashboard, if I wanted to replace this placeholder text with my username and password, I can use the sys.getn function rather than putting this password directly in the code. And if I render this dashboard, it's a little bit hard to see because of the current CSS, but it did output it right here. Let's also add in the username. And when I re-render, I can see that it gets updated here and now it's got both the username and the password. Again, pretty hard to see because we haven't done a lot of work on this dashboard yet to make it look aesthetically pleasing. But really what I'm trying to illustrate here is the functionality of being able to use an environment file to store passwords and so on. So this is great when we're working locally, but what about when we're using GitHub Actions and GitHub Pages? How can we take this same idea and apply it using GitHub Actions. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our Git ignore 
and we're going to make sure that the .r environ file is included in the gitignore. We really, really, really don't want to accidentally upload that to GitHub because then anyone in the world will be able to see passwords, usernames, and whatever else you put inside of that file. We're going to need to add the passwords or other confidential information as action secrets on this repository. And to do that, we're going to go to settings, scroll down to secrets and variables, click on actions, and then under repository secrets, click on new repository secret. Here you'll give a name to the secret and technically the name that you choose here doesn't have to be the same name that you'll use when you run the sys.getn function in R. They can be the same if you want them to be, but they don't have to be. So just to demonstrate that, I'm gonna call this one my username underscore GHA for GitHub Actions. And then in here is where you're going to store that information. So I'm setting this value to be, this is my username stored on GitHub. I'm going to also add a password as an example. And this time I'll say, this is my password stored on GitHub. Once we've defined those, we can go to the publish.yml file and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And there's a section here that says env. And here is where we'll define these environment variables so that they're accessible in our R scripts. On the left, we're going to say the name of the environment variable. And this is going to be the name that we use when we run the sys.getenv function. So I'm going to call this one my username. And then just like the syntax above, I'm going to copy and paste that. And then instead of it saying GitHub token, this is where you're going to put that name that you had defined here. So the first one is my username GHA. And then the second one, we're going to change this to my password and then my password underscore GitHub actions. Then I'm going to push all of these changes to GitHub. And we can see here that it managed to pull in those values that we stored as action secrets on GitHub. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.